Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. As always, I am your host, Sarah, and as always, I am more than happy, delighted in fact, to be with you for another author interview to share that with you. Um, hope you're having a great week. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We are just chucking our, chucking, chugging, <laughs> trucking, something, I'm not sure what I meant to say there. We are just uh, moving our way through November, aren't we? I can't believe that Thanksgiving is a week away, a little over a week away. It'll be next week, and um, they don't celebrate it here in Portugal. Of course, it's an American holiday, and Canadian, but that's in October. But uh, they, they don't celebrate it here. But we did have a couple of friends invite us over, friends from California, as it happens, who have invited us to their place. So we're going to celebrate um, a slightly, well... I don't know how traditional it will be. It won't matter because we'll be hanging out with friends and then that's the point, right? To be with people that you care about and to celebrate the things that you're thankful for. Um, so we're looking forward to that. It was just my husband's birthday. That was wonderful. He is uh, definitely the ride or die in our relationship. <laughs> I have too many questions. Where are we going? Will there be snacks? Why do we have to die uh, to be that in our... But he is definitely... He's he's up for any adventure. He's the facilitator of most of our adventures. He is extroverted. He is a morning person. He is just out there and happy and positive. And he brings me along for the ride. So we celebrated his birthday by going to the beach and just hanging out and spending time together and he was joking that because they do not celebrate Thanksgiving here that his birthday is now the official start of the the Christmas season so only in Portugal nowhere else I, I used to be I used to be one of those people that December 1st no Christmas anything until December 1st and then I moved that back to the day after Thanksgiving I, I tried to get through Thanksgiving first and and now you know what there's so much craziness in the world right now. I will take my joy where I can find it. So I said, yes, if you want to start your birth, your, if you want to start Christmas on your birthday, cool. We watched, well, only half of a Christmas movie last night because then we both fell asleep, but we started our Christmas movie watching and it was awesome. And I'm not going to complain. <laughs> it was a wonderful day. So that's pretty much, you know, the update from here. Hope you, as I said, you're having a good week. Hope good things have happened, whether you're decorating for Christmas or whether you even celebrate Christmas. I hope there's something that is bringing you joy as we speak. Author interviews bring me joy. I love meeting new authors and reading books that I might not otherwise, and this is no exception. Today I am speaking with author Francesca Miracola about her book. It is a memoir. It's called I got it from here, A Memoir of Awakening to the Power Within, and there are some content warnings. This does deal with a toxic relationship, um, an abusive marriage, a man who is really a sociopath in a lot of ways. So if that is something that is not going to be in your comfort zone, you may want to skip this one. But if it, it is really ultimately a story of hope and a story of listening to your own inner voice, etc. So there's a lot more to it, but there are those elements in there as well. So I always want to give that warning ahead of time. And Francesca does not go into details in this interview, so there's not a lot of that here if you still want to listen to the interview. She talks more about the overall experience and the 
the takeaways that she got from the experience, et cetera, and what she's doing moving forward. Let me go ahead and give you a the description of the book. Again, it's called I Got It From Here, A Memoir of Awakening to the Power Within. And the description is as follows. Growing up in an Italian-American family in Queens, New York in the 70s, Francesca Miracola was trained from an early age to keep up appearances at all costs. But behind closed doors, her parents' toxic marriage served as a blueprint for dysfunction. So when she met Jason Axel at a bar as a 20-something, she ignored all the red flags, and there were plenty of them, and dove right in, normalizing his emotional and physical abuse just like she'd learned to do. She even married and had two children with him. But something in her clicked one night when Jason strolled out the door after a vicious fight that left her degraded on the floor, and she decided she was done. Except Jason wouldn't let her go. Even after they finally divorced and Francesca fell in love with someone else, her ex-husband was keen enough to recognize that she was the same broken girl he'd met a decade earlier, and he exploited that fact at every turn. He called the cops to her home with bogus claims. He bombarded her with provoking emails and texts. He stalked her every move, and worst of all, he used their little boys as pawns in his campaign. Then he went for the jugular and sued her for custody. But Francesca was stronger than he'd given her credit for. Raw and illuminating, I Got It From Here is one woman's story of saving herself and her children from the grips of a sociopath posing as a family man, and from the inherited trauma passed down by her own family of birth, while learning to trust in the inner voice that's been trying to guide her all along. So from that description, you can see that it there, there are some definitely, there, there's some definite painful parts of this book. There's painful family of origin stories. There's painful marital stories. There's painful post-divorce stories in this book. But you can also see that there is hope within this book. And there is, um, experiences of listening to whatever that voice is inside of us that guides us, however you define that, however you experience it. Francesca talks about that and talks about how she came to start listening to that voice and how she learned to move forward and try to break some of those generational cycles that we're all trapped in to a certain extent, right? All of us grow up in families of origin. We all learn things within those families of origin. Some of those things are amazing and wonderful and should be passed on. Others are not as great. And regardless of where on the the toxicity spectrum they fall, a lot of those traits need to be broken, right? So that we can move forward and be healthy ourselves, raise healthier next generations, etc. And this book is all about that, recognizing it, doing the best we can to move forward and make those changes. So let's go ahead and let Francesca talk about the book and the experience of writing the book. Um, again, her name is Francesca Miracola, and the book is I Got It From Here. Francesca, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I am happy to have you here. I'm looking forward to talking about your book. It's a memoir. Before we do that, though, if you wouldn't mind just taking a few moments to share a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you, that would be wonderful. Okay, great. And if you don't mind, I actually might just kind of go off of my my formal bio only because I, I kind of love it and I think it's a little fun and I think it's so it's like a great way to summarize like who I am. So sure. um, forgive me for being kind of almost like formally reading it, but, but, but again, I kind of enjoy it. Um, so I'm an Italian American from Queens, New York. I currently live on Long Island. Um, but in my mind, I'm a free spirited wanderer. I would love to travel the world, but I'm kind of afraid to fly. Um, although I'm working on that and you know what, a glass of wine gets me through most of my flights. So, um, I'm mostly an introvert who greatly prefers deep, meaningful conversations to surface small small talk. Um, and I'm, I keep my circle small, uh, but I'm currently debating if that's like a good or bad thing. I'm a breast cancer survivor, but I rarely define myself as one. And I think it's because I feel like I've actually been surviving something most of my life. Um, I'm funny. At least I make myself laugh. And I graduated from New York University 
and worked in financial services, actually still work in financial services for 25 plus years now, um, even though I always wanted to be a therapist. And um, I guess as the saying would go, that's probably because I needed a therapist. And uh, I finally wound up on my true path, though, as a student and teacher of A, of a Course in Miracles, um, an author, a life coach, and the founder of my company, Protagonist Within. I'm a wife, uh, a best friend, and above all, a mother. Wonderful. Thank you. And yes, I do remember reading that, uh, your bio on on the book and thinking it was very descriptive. Um, I think <laughs> a lot of authors tend to be introverted, so that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the book is a memoir. You've just shared a little bit about yourself. We're going to go a little deeper because you do share a lot in the book. So can you give an overview? It's called, um, I got it from here, a memoir of awakening to the power. So can you give a brief overview? Yes. And to the power within. Um, so Sorry. yes, I could know that's uh, within is like a, a very important kind of message that came out of all of this for me. So, um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so the memoir, it's a story of my emotional journey through an abusive marriage and a cruel custody battle um, and how I freed myself and my children from really the grips of a sociopath. And But there's this, this other layer of like my reflection on the inherited trauma that was passed down from my own family of origin and which gives the readers some insight insight into like why I married this guy in the first place. Right. Um, and all of this is going on while I'm like very slowly learning to trust like an inner voice that's been trying to, you know, guide me all along. And, um, I would say, I love how someone summarized it for me. Um, after, after they had read it, they said, it's, it's both a story of hope for women looking to rebuild their lives from the ashes and a cautionary tale for younger ones. And that's, and that's really what I was going for when, when I kind of shared the story. That's such an apt description because it, it is equal parts hope and cautionary tale. I mean, there, there's, there's some content warnings because there is, you know, it is an abusive relationship. So people want to have that in mind when, before they start reading it. Um, but it, it does have that underlying level of hope. That was actually my transition from one question to another. So that seems like a really good time to just stop in the middle before I moved on to the question portion of that. It is time for our first break of the episode. When we come back, we'll talk about what prompted Francesca to write down her experiences as a memoir. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. As you know, I am speaking with Francesca Miracola about her memoir. I got it from here, a memoir of awakening to the power within. So let's go ahead and return to that interview. What prompted you initially to sit down and write your experiences as a memoir? So it's interesting because, you know, as you you know now from, from reading it, and um, thank you for that, I, the... I really spent, I guess, the darkest years of my life battling with my ex-husband for custody of our two young sons. And, you know, oftentimes throughout that ordeal, I would sense this like little, 
like kind of like a flickering light in the distance of my mind. And I know that sounds really weird. (laughs) And at the time I didn't know what it was, but I just kind of knew like it was trying to get my attention. And, you know, of course I ignored it. Right. And I just would like keep the focus. Like my focus was very much on the drama at hand at the time. Um, and as I was going through it, if you could appreciate, like I would basically kind of vent my painful story to anyone who would listen. Right. And that was like the entire existence. Like that was like all, all that was going on for me, you know, at the time. And, and anytime I would try and like, you know, kind of just like unload my pain or share, share my tale, people would say to me, like, you know, you should write a book. (laughs) And, and then like that little light would flicker and, and like some, something inside of me would just be like, yes, yes. Like I, I kind of just knew. And I would, like, I tossed it around in my mind for several, several years, like the idea of like kind of writing a book about the story of what was going on. And I do have a very close contact in the publishing industry. And when I went to them with it, they really discouraged me from writing it. They like tried to convince me, you know, no one would be interested in your story because I wasn't like a celebrity. So it was kind of like a dream squash conversation. And then, you know, like my story was being left untold, but like that whispering yes kind of still lingered in, inside of me. And then I feel like, um, I don't know if you're a little woo like I am, but I kind of feel like the universe must have known like I needed more of a nudge, right? So um, basically it came in the form of uh, breast cancer and I was diagnosed and the when the radiologist said to me, you know, you have invasive breast cancer and you need to see a surgeon right away. I, I swear my first thought was my children, right? I feared, you know, I was going to leave them too young. And my second thought was the book, right? I feared, I, I really feared I was going to die without having having written it. So that was like, okay, I'm doing this. So soon after my treatment was through, I guess now this was back in about 2016, um, I wound up hiring uh, a really like inexpensive ghostwriter. And um, so that we could talk about that a little bit as far as like the book writing process, but I wound up that, that wound up, um, not being the route I ultimately went, but it it, it kind of was what kickstarted the whole process for me. So this was again in about 2016. And what came out of that exercise was that uh, I wound up with a poorly written, very angry and vindictive account of what my ex did to me. Um, And I was really a newbie. I was basically clueless. Like I was not a writer. I I had never been, you know, I never did anything like this. And so I didn't know much about the industry and how it all worked. But so, so being so clueless, I, I submitted that ridiculous draft to my publisher back in 2000, a publisher back in 2018. Um, And thank goodness that she suggested I work with a book coach um, that she recommended and she, because she, she believed I had a story there and she really believed that this coach would help me bring my work to a higher level. So, I mean, I did hesitate a bit because I had been burned by the last book coach, but I was, you know, I was trusting this publisher. And so sure enough, she connected me with the, with the coach and we round, wound up really hitting it off. And I loved her and I loved the whole process with her. So I basically started over from scratch. I rewrote the entire book. And then I was shocked to learn that there was so much more to my story than I originally thought, right? It wasn't just about, you know, my ex and the custody battle and the family court and all the pain and the abuse. Um, There was that, like we said earlier, that added layer of introspective, like, you know, my background and, and kind of how I got here. And so I'm just really thankful that by that time, you know, again, this was years later, I was, um, I was willing to see it. And then I had this help along the way. So, uh, you know, I, I worked with the book coach for a couple of years and then resubmitted to back to the publisher. And then, you know, thankfully they greenlit that version. And as you know, my book wound up published in this past spring of 2023. So it's a process. It's a long game, but that's oh, absolutely. Uh, and yeah. I, I can understand how easy it would be to cross that line in debt angry bitterness in terms of writing it because it, it's such you, you had so many hard experiences and as a reader it's this is going to sound negative but bear with me it, it's it's a little painful to read sometimes because one 
as the outside reader, you're separate, you're more separated and you just keep thinking because you're separated, you're like critiquing. Well, why do you keep doing that this way? (laughs) (laughs) But also because it's not fiction, it's a memoir. It's painful because you feel so deeply everything that you must have been going through and just, you want to reach in and, and fix it. Right. So how did you decide which experiences to include, how to, to steer it more, um, toward that, that reflection and, and introspection away from more of the angry? How, how did that process work for you? So I think by the time I was sitting down to read it, I was also, um, starting my own kind of spiritual journey and my like inner work in healing. And I was very much doing that through, um, a practice called a course in miracles. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or whatever, but so I, it was just interesting that the timing worked out that I was finally open to healing and, um, you know, writing the book, which is also very cathartic. Right. So, I feel like, how did I know the scenes to include? It would be like there were certain memories that I could still very much feel in my own body. And I knew that based on those like strong feelings that these scenes weren't going to just come out as words on the page. Um. I, I I kind of knew that these scenes and and the emotions that I was still very deeply feeling within me were were memories that were kind of tied into the themes and messages that I knew needed to be shared and would resonate with someone. Right. So it was kind of this strange feeling of it was almost like playing a movie reel of my life in my mind and writing very powerful scenes from certain memories. And and there was somehow a level of knowing that the particular memories that were really jumping out at me, it was like something was telling me, yes, these are the ones that need to be shared. So it, it you know, it kind of came that way. I, I'll also say the book coach was really helpful in that sometimes I would write something that if anybody who's been through abuse or, you know, some sort of dysfunction kind of knows that sadly you sometimes normalize things. Um, It's just been, you know, just so much what you're used to that you would normalize them. And I would write something almost matter of factly. And then the book coach would get that draft chapter and she would say, whoa, let's talk about this. Like some sentence would jump out at her and um, she would ask me to do a deeper dive into that. And then, you know, like surprisingly to me, it was something that then would become included in the book because, you know, like, again, like you had said earlier as an outsider, you know, she was like picking up on something that was just like, again, normalized for me. So, you know, she was very helpful with that as well. Yeah. I can imagine it would be so helpful to have that outside perspective um, because it sounds like a lot of the book writing was pretty intuitive for you, but then to have someone else, to be, be able to step back and say, why is this included? What happened next, et cetera. Yeah. And like you said earlier, and I appreciate it because, and I know you said like, oh, it might come off as negative, but you know, what shocked me, what shocked me, some of the feedback from like my first, you know, when we were kind of going through with the publisher and some proofreaders and, you know, some beta readers before it went out into the world, the feedback of, domestic violence, abuse, you know, I, I don't know why that shocked me, but it kind of did. And I was like, wow. And, you know, because sometimes in, in your minds, when you think of like, you know, an abusive situation, you know, you picture probably the, the worst news story you ever read or the worst, you know, maybe TV movie you ever watched about it. And I didn't really see my life that way, right? For the most part, I lived, you know, a a pretty quote unquote, like comfortable, like easy, you know, life. I had my children, I was living in suburbia, like I was working, you know, I, and so it, it shocked me to see my life and the abuse through the eyes 
of the readers and people who, like you said, were kind of like removed from what I was going through. And um, that's just very sad because like I said, I think a lot of people unfortunately normalize some of this stuff in their lives. And it's, it's hard to see it when you're so in it. So it was helpful to have a coach too. And again, my spiritual practice. Yeah. You know, when you live with something long enough, it does become normalized for you. And and it just seems like, well, yeah, this is the way it, maybe it's always been, or it's always going to be. And it's, it's easy to kind of get stuck there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So you mentioned that it was cathartic, which I can only imagine it must've been cathartic, but it also, I can only imagine was incredibly hard sometimes to relive some of that. So for you, what, what did you take away from the overall process of the writing of the book? Um, so yes, there were times where it was very painful to write. Um, and I found that oftentimes after a writing session, I would have to do some sort of physical activity, even if it was like a really long power walk, um, to kind of shake that, like just kind of reliving the old trauma, like really shaking it off. Um, I found though that as the stuff was resurfacing, it was sort of showing me ways that a lot of the old emotional pain was still playing out in my current life. So as it was turning up on the page, it was also coming up from, from my, from my inner, you know, from my insides. And I was like, okay, wow, this, this was really like, we keep saying a cathartic process. So, um, I guess just a couple of quick things that came out and then I'll talk more about the cathartic process. I really believe that after writing this, I do really sense that there is some sort of higher power or a force working through all of us because again, this was like never part of my background, this whole like writing and publishing experience. And I know it sounds like a little cliche, but I actually at times felt like something was writing through me right? It was just like this very weird feeling of like something was pouring through me. And I've heard that said before, and I never really kind of understood it until it happened. And, and then I also believe that this higher power, you know, whatever it is that people want to believe in, it, it, it also presented me with the resources to, to, to kind of go through this process. Um, And, you know, again, for me, the intention of this book, you know, turned out to be to really help others heal. And I think with that intention, it it felt like the resources were made available to me. So whether, whether it was the time in my schedule or even the financial resources that were needed to hire a coach and do what I was doing kind of like showed up exactly when it needed to. So I really kind of trust in like a higher process now. And even like the right people would show up along the way. And I was like, okay, something sort of pushed this along. So it's very nice to kind of have that like something like larger than me to believe in now. And I do, but back to the cathartic, like, I feel like the, the, like as I was typing, as I was typing, I was like, I, it was like really, really like releasing a lot of my past. And I came to start to realize that like it was my own, like as you kind of probably alluded to before, it was my own like fragile emotional state, my own thoughts and beliefs, my own fears and my own like frayed nervous system that really kept causing and like, you know, re-causing all this angst, right? Like when you were saying like, oh my God, why do you keep doing this way, right? And that was like sort of what started really jumping out at me from the page. And there's this uh, there's my favorite quote in, in again, the Course in Miracles, which is the spiritual practice I follow. The course, the, the quote says, let me look on the world I see as the representation of my own state of mind. And I was like, wow, I, I see that now. Like I see that, you know, it's your inner state that kind of like shows up in your external circumstances. And I think oftentimes, um, you know, we might try to like fix and manage external situations, relationships, circumstances, and you just like beating at it and beating at it. And you keep coming at it from the same like brokenness that where it like started. And so the writing the book helped me really see my own brokenness and, and start to kind of like work on that. And, you know, I really had to look within myself you know, to the, to the energy that I was projecting on the world around me. And, you know, it's funny because then my ex, he kind of seemed irrelevant 
with every word I wrote. And um, so that was very healing. And the other thing was there was this really exciting moment for me when I was writing it and again, working with my book coach. And, you know, we were reviewing a chapter and, you know, she just casually said to me, well, you know, you're the protagonist here. And I thought like, that just like hit me. I was like, yeah, you know, the story had always been mine, right? Like I am the protagonist and, you know, the protagonist gets to decide how the story unfolds. And if you could imagine that was like a life altering, like empowering moment for me, right. To kind of take back ownership of my life. And, and that just really kind of like sums up the work I've been doing on myself and also, you know, a big part of the message I hope to leave readers with. Which makes absolute sense. And um, yes, you're the protagonist, but you lived in relationships that have been telling you your entire life that you were not that important. <laughs> you were not yes. the protagonist. So it, it, it's <laughs> completely logical that your brain would be like, oh, wait, yeah, you know what I am? Um, I am the main character of my own life. So and also, yeah, um, it's, 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 it's so simple, right? Doesn't it sound so simple, but it was like, it hit me like, wow, this is like the most profound <laughs> right. and really life altering, empowering moment. Right. You know? Well, it was the time that you could hear it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. It's time for our second break of this episode, but it makes me pause and wonder a bit as we go into this break how many of us actually think about ourselves as the main characters of our own life do do we do you ever think about it i'm i'm going to i'm actually going to contemplate that now there's that line in the holiday um when Kate Winslet's character is talking to Eli Wallach's character and he tells her, why, why are you acting like the best friend when you're, you know, you have main character or something along, along those lines. I should be able to quote it. I've seen that movie a million times. Um, it's that th that's that same theory, right? Let's contemplate that as we go to break. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Francesca Miracola. And you are actually my second interview in a row. Last weekend was the, was the same about the the feeling like something was kind of writing through you. So, mm -hmm. you know, however listeners might perceive that or think of that, it it definitely there's something there. There's something in that that um being in a space where the words come from somewhere and you're not always sure why or where they come from. Yeah. And I think in life, you know, listen, not everybody is going to write a book. Not everybody is going, you know, we all have our different. And, and I, I do think though that that force comes or, and those, and that kind of inner voice is there for all of us, you know, and, and, and it doesn't matter how, you know, it's going to manifest in the world. And like, like for some, it's a book for others, it will be other things. But I just think what came out of this for me is just like that importance of really listening to that, that inner voice and that gut feeling. And because I do believe that there's um, something trying to, you know, point all of us in some direction towards something. And so it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's really a great moment when you like feel that and tap into it and then like kind of watch it unfold. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You have three children. Um, 
obviously they lived through parts of this as well. What was their, what have been their reactions to writing the book, reading the book, the whole experience? So, yeah, thanks. Um, the, my, my older two children are, uh, my sons from this first marriage. Um, they are in their twenties now. And so they were very proud of me. Um, I think that I hope that in reading it, um, it helped them heal a little bit because, you know, yes, they lived through this bitter divorce and bitter, you know, custody battle and the abuse and, um, just a lot of, their childhood was spent with me raising them through a lot of my own pain. Um, and so, you know, of course they, they suffer their own, uh, you know, emotional pains from, from this whole family process that they went through. But I think, I hope it's been somewhat of a gift to them to sort of see me heal and to kind of, you know, put this story down and, and something tangible that they can look at and, and, and hopefully, you know, sort of help them process some of it and help them heal as well. Um, my, my youngest, my, my third, uh, so she is, uh, my daughter with my, my second husband. Now this was happening a little bit while I was pregnant with her. And certainly early on, um, I do believe, and I think there's science backing this, that my stress and angst while I was pregnant with her and going through this, you know, kind of does impact. So, um, and then also when she first came into the world, I was literally, I mean, in my darkest, darkest, darkest place. Um, so I'm sure that that's had some impact on her. And I also feel like during her early childhood was not only a little bit of me going through the custody battle, but it was almost, there were years there where like these old, like, like these, it was like just this, it was, I like almost like exploded. I exploded in like a rage for a few years because when I started to like look at, you know, how at the abuse, um, and also like you had said, you know, yes, I was the protagonist of my own story and we all kind of are, but you know, I didn't really know that I had been told for so long, you know, by so many, you know, in so many abusive and toxic ways, like, no, no, no. And as a woman, when you finally are like, hell no, like I'm, I'm ready to heal here and I'm ready to, it, it comes out sometimes at first in anger, almost like a pot of water, water boiling over. Right. So I feel I, the same way I feel like there was some generational pain passed down to my boys who were part of this marriage. I, I know that there was generational pain unfortunately passed down to my daughter. Now I haven't had her read the man, the, the book yet, because I feel like she's still a little too young. Um, but I do hope to one day kind of gift that to her and hope again, the same way with my boys that kind of her having the experience, hopefully of, of watching mom heal will help her kind of process and understand a little bit of what was going on maybe in my world and in our family and, and help her release some of the pain maybe that she felt. And that's another big part of, of one of the messages of the book is, is kind of generational trauma. And, you know, it's real. And I think a lot of us are just blindly going through life, um, you know, carrying the pain and stress from one generation to the other. And I think it's really important to be that cycle breaker and just say, whoa, stop, you know, and I don't, I don't want to contribute to the problem anymore. I don't want to like pass this you know, off to my own children. And, um, so I just really hope people are kind of inspired to do that in their own families. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I sort of see it, you know, as far as my children go. And I, and I just hope that each generation kind of gets more and more enlightened. Yeah, that's a, that's a hope, a good hope. Um, you, you mentioned at one point in the book that in the first, I think, year of your daughter's life, she'd been to more lawyers' offices and, and court yeah. You know, just more than most people go through through in their entire life, which yeah. is a pretty stark image when you think about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's some pain there, but you know, I think we're, we could all hopefully work through it. Yeah. Uh, well, and also, you know, the rage 
the, the, you kept exploding in rage. You said that phrase makes complete sense because so much of our mental health is based on what we express and repress. And, you know, depression is so often just unexpressed anger and those sorts of things. So it, it, it's all tied together. Um, yeah, absolutely. And you've touched on this a little bit, but what do you hope that readers are going to take away from this book? So I guess I really, um, like we said, I hope they really start to listen to their inner voice and be true to themselves and like follow that gut. Um, and as we just talked about, I really hope it inspires people to get honest and break patterns of generational trauma, you know, that, that that's playing out. Um, and I don't obviously want to ruin it, but I really hope that when readers finish at the very last page, I hope they're inspired to take an honest look within and kind of humbly begin their own healing journey. Um, and that's, those are, those were the three main like themes and hopes that I had as I was working through the book. And, you know, I think what's also, what's kind of come out of this for me, um, and, and I hope that, you know, others can kind of experience this too, is that I think you know, it's important for us to know that we're really not alone in whatever it is we're going through. Um, and obviously some people have, you know, different circumstances and maybe it's not always going to be, you know, abuse, but it might be some other sort of pain or struggle. It could be addiction. It could be, you know, whatever, whatever it is that people are going through. Um, I actually just think it's so important for all of us to kind of like open up and, and, and be honest and, and share our experiences because I think it's like through that vulnerability and like shared human experiences where we really all connect. And I think people need each other's honesty. Like, I think it's important to be honest because you'll probably be helping like through your honesty, you'll be helping someone else maybe heal their pain. And in, and in doing so it's like, it's all circular, right? Because that also helps you heal your pain. And I think people, I know I did too, people want to kind of just like, you know, put up like the front and, it, you know, I don't know, people seem to kind of like self-protect or be a little defensive or, you know, the phrase is like, you don't want to air your dirty laundry and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think the truth of the matter is we do all need to share and connect. And I think that that's how, you know, two by two, we're all going to start to like heal and, and hopefully one day have a better world for all of us really. Yeah. We're, we're, we're taught so often to, like you said, not air our dirty laundry, keep it inside, keep that image, you, you know, and, and yeah. it's in some ways it's better and worse with social media because in some ways we see just the perfection of social media that people put out there, but in other ways people are sharing more of their experiences on social media. So I think it's, it's a balance. <laughs> yeah. You have to find that. Right. Because there are, um, like you said, yes, unfortunately the feelings of like this, you know, fake, fake world that people could portray on social media, but there are, are also some really wonderful people doing wonderful work out there on social media, helping people kind of feel like, oh, they're not alone and they're connected. And, oh, you know, this is what's going on for me. And, oh my God, look, there's so many people that have this and, you know, this is how they work through it. So, you know, when it's, when it's used for that, it's great, right? <laughs> yes. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's as, as two people who grew up without social media and in some ways that's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to see how that shift has taken place, especially in the last 20 years, just to watch that happen. Yeah. Um, which is a bit of a, a side note, but, that you didn't come to writing, you know, some people grow up their whole lives writing stories, knowing they want to be an author someday. You didn't come to it from that way. You, you wrote a very specific book. Do you want to write more? So I do. I do. I feel like there is another book that I'm, you know, a memoir again, um, a different phase of my life, maybe kind of like the 10 to 15 years post custody battle and, and like what my whole healing process has been like, and maybe centered around, um, more specific stories about my own family of origin. Um, I kind of envision it more as a, as a book, um, for my brothers. Um, so it's like, it's funny cause it's in me, 
but it's not ready to come out of me. So I take some notes and I do some thoughts and I know from my past experience, like when that moment strikes and that flood comes through me, it will pour out. So it's there. And, uh, and one day maybe I will. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you talked about how it, 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 it came through you at one point. You, you don't want to try to force that. <laughs> right, right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It is time for our final break of this episode. When we come back, advice from Francesca for people who might be thinking of writing a memoir themselves. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC book, book review podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that... The one that we rely on to get us, to get us. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with Francesca Miracola. Do you, from your experience, and you've had some interesting experiences because you've done this a couple different ways um, in, <laughs> in the writing of the memoir, do you have advice for someone who's thinking they have a story to tell, they might want to write some of their own life as a memoir? Yeah, um, sure. I think especially when it comes to memoir and usually I guess, you know, memoir would probably be covering maybe some difficult topics, not always, but it's usually memoir is like a deep soul connection, right. And some sort of like healing journey. So um, I think that it's really important for a writer to kind of like also explore their own inner world while, while they're doing this, because I feel like, um, the more you work on like your inner world, the, the, the more of a mark you'll kind of leave on the outer world. Right. So, um, it's, I think like we had said about my process, it's, it's so much deeper when there's that, like that level of truth and depth versus just like the reporting of kind of like what happened. Um, so I think that that's really important. I think it's also important to, for me, it helped to have like just one or two people in mind when I was writing, because I think I was able to almost speak to them, you know, versus the panic of having this large audience and how everyone will receive it. And, you know, you can kind of drown yourself in that. I think having um, a person or two in mind who you really feel like you're telling the story for kind of helps it, it flow out. Um, and I think that, um, it's important to like submit it to like to, 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 to have a purpose to your work. Um, you know, again, who do you want to reach? Like, what is the, what is the, the message and like, some sort of hope for healing or inspiration in somebody. And then I, because I think when, when you really have that desire, like I said, there's some sort of force that will sort of help that desire, you know, manifest. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but yeah, I think I did. It's, it's, it's a long game. I mean, when you think about it, I didn't write my first word until 2016. And keep in mind, it was dancing around in my head for years before that. So I sit and write my first word in 2016 and it doesn't get, you know, my book is actually published in 2023. So that's seven years from writing to publication and plus the years that it was dancing around in my head. So, um, you know, just, just, just kind of, if it's in you, just, you know, go with the process, no pressure on the outcome. Um, doesn't have to happen in six months and just, just be patient. And then it's just like a wonderful, wonderful 
moment when it's like, when it's real and you, you see the cover for the first time. Um, so, and, and, you know, just kind of enjoy the process because if you're writing, I feel like I, at least I know for me that the book process was part of my, um, was part of like my whole healing process. So there's, there's more going on than just the book, you know? Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's what I could say from my experience. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I resonate so strongly with what you said about, um, you know, keeping just a couple people in mind, not trying to think of <laughs> all of the people who might be reading your book because my inner monologue is so many different questions of, well, what if this person thinks this and I, that someone's going to think this and no, somebody else is going to think this. And then I just <laughs> spin myself into kind of a, a frenzy of overthinking and inaction. <laughs> Right. Then you get stuck and then you get stuck, you know, and it's funny because when you, like you were saying, it's like, well, how's this one going to respond to this? And what will they think? And will this one like this? Or will this one criticize this? And, you know, I found another thing I found was that, you know, you kind of think like, let's, let's face it from like an ego perspective, you know, you're writing this book and you're going to publish this book and you're like, you know, you have these visions of like New York times bestseller and like, oh, I can't wait for my Oprah interview. And you know, you're kind of like hoping for like, but the truth of the matter is like the, 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 the real joy and the real, like the, the, what I'm actually so thankful for was really, is really none of that ego stuff and like approval of the masses and like, you know, where it's all going to go. The, the, the greatest, the greatest feedback has been, you know, the message from a woman or a DM from someone that says like, thank you so much for this. I needed this or oh my God, I read your memoir and I have a friend who really needs this. And I'm, you know, or the person that says, you know, I couldn't put this down. This was me, you know, thank you. So it, it's, it's like just that, that deeper connection is, is really what's so much more important. And again, if you could have like the person in mind, like a person in mind, and then just trust that it's, it's gonna, it's gonna touch, it's gonna touch like the souls that it needs to touch and, and if, and whoever it's not for, it, it won't be for, there'll be other stuff for them, you know? So it's, it's good to get rid of all that noise. Yeah. Letting go of some of that and just knowing that if you put it out there, somebody who needs to hear it is going to hear it. Absolutely. Yeah. How about reading? When you take time to read for yourself, what genres, what authors do you tend to gravitate towards? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say like particular authors. I do love memoir. I, I mean, I just, I love it. And I, I like anything that's kind of, um, spiritual or like on the self help kind of, um, you know, the genres. Um, as far as like a specific author though, someone who I do always really like to thank is Marianne Williamson. Um, and specifically for her book, A Return to Love, because that was the first time I feel like something really spoke to me that I, like, I knew something was there. And I, and I, this sheet, her book, Return to Love is what introduced me to A Course in Miracles. And that's become, again, my practice. And so I'm always very thankful for Marianne's work. Um, cause I think not only did it, 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 it just sparked my interest in A Course in Miracles. And I do think that by starting to follow some of her readings and some of her teachings and her work, it, it brought me on this whole journey. M my own, you know, memoir as well came from all of that. Wonderful. Thank you so much. If people want to know more about the book or maybe a little bit more about you and your work, can you, um, if you have a website, if you can share that and any social media that you're active on where people can interact with you. Sure. Um, so I do have a website. It's um, FrancescaMiracola.com, my name. Um, I am trying to <laughs> be active on social media, although I'm really not good at it and I don't particularly like it, but um I do have one of my sons helping me with my social media, which is very cute. So I am on Instagram as Francesca Miracola and Facebook. Um, but again, you know, kind of work with me here as 
as uh, you know, he really more introduces it to me and gets me there. I'm also thinking of starting, um, this is kind of new to me, although I think it's been around for a while, Substack. So I'm starting to look into that because from what I understand, it's a really nice place for writers to share um, just like little snippets of their work and, and connect with people there. So hopefully that will be coming soon. And you could, of course, you know, find the book on Amazon and, you know, you could really go into any local bookstore and support indie. And if they don't carry it, you know, it's very easy for them to get it, but yeah, it's out there. It's available. And you could find me, like I said, on my website and social media. Perfect. Thank you. Well, Francesca, we've talked about a variety of different things, but is there anything that we have not covered that you wanted to make sure was brought up or that you highlighted during this time? Um, you know, I, I really, I want to thank you so much for the, for the questions that you gave me and an opportunity. I know you gave me a little time to prepare and I really do feel like, you know, thank you because your questions did hit on like everything that I do want to talk to people about and cover, you know, not only about the book, but my children and my, and like kind of the spiritual practice and just the process of writing. So, um, yeah, I think, I think we've covered it. Um, and maybe only one thing that's funny, it just jumped in my head. And, and like I said, I've learned to kind of listen to the voice. So something did just jump in. And uh, one of my good friends and I talk about this all the time. I feel like, especially for women of, of, of my age, that it's never too late to do something either, you know, different or something that's kind of inspiring you, right? Because look at me, I've been in financial services since, you know, since I graduated from college. And sometimes it feels like it's like impossible to pivot to something else. Um, but I kind of look back over the past few years and I'm, and I'm like, you know, and I, I, I complain about financial services. I don't like it. <laughs> I've never liked it. And, um, and I'm like, oh, wow, for all the complaining I do, I kind of had an opportunity over these, you know, past several years to really pivot to, you know, on a different path with the writing and the life coaching and like the spiritual practice and stuff like that. Um, and so I just, I just want to, like, I, I just hope that others will find some inspiration in knowing like you can sort of like follow your dreams and, 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 and it does sort of, there's ways to pivot to that. So little career advice, not that I'm a career coach, but it was just funny how it kind of happened. Sure. And you never know every, every step has led you here. So you just never know if you change one thing, what else may have changed in your life. So that's always an interesting thing to ponder. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about the book and your experiences, um, being so open with those experiences. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you once again to Francesca for joining me, for sharing her experiences, for being so open to being vulnerable about those experiences and sharing them with others. Uh, there's lots of people that have various kinds of relationships that aren't healthy and talking about them and knowing that you're not alone and ex re being able to read someone else's experiences, I think is so incredibly important to maybe take the steps that need to be taken in order to rectify or remedy the situation that we often find ourselves in, in relationships that are not healthy, um, regardless of what that relationship looks like. So thank you to Francesca for not only writing this book, but then coming on the podcast to talk about it and share her experiences with me and with all of you. It's so very much appreciated. If you are a fan of memoirs, you might want to check this out. If you just find Francesca's story compelling, you should definitely check out this memoir. It is, like I said, not always an easy read, but um, because her experiences were so painful for her and her family, um, and it can be hard to live through that even even through the through the pages of a book, through the words on those pages, but it is such, as I said, an important story. And so if you are interested at all or know someone who likes memoirs or thinks who might enjoy this story, you definitely should go grab yourself a copy of this book. And of course, the holidays are coming up. So if you're thinking about holiday shopping, books are always a great answer. But you know me, I think books are the answer for everything. So it doesn't matter what the question is. Books are very often the answer. 
I hope that you enjoyed this interview. I hope that you will join me for the next interview. It is another memoir, uh, a very different memoir. And in this case, we have co-authors who happen to be identical twins. I will be talking to Argita and Atina Zali about their experiences leaving Albania in the late 90s, um, their experiences of being refugees and immigrants. Um, so please join me for that conversation on the next episode. In the meantime, as you know, there are several things that you can do to help the podcast. Find more listeners such as your wonderful selves. Make sure you're liked, liking, follow, like, follow, and subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. That way you'll always know when there are new episodes and you can also leave a review. Um, that can be written. It can be starred. However, your podcast platform sets that up. Any review is helpful and thank you in advance for any review you feel compelled to leave. Also, you can follow the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Love, love, love hearing from you. Come find the podcast and me on social media and tell me what you've been up to and what you've been reading. I hope you're having a great week. I hope, as I said at the beginning, that something in this week is bringing you joy. No matter how big or how small, I hope you are finding moments of joy within your week. And, you know, that might be reading. So I hope that whatever your week is throwing at you, you have plenty of time or even stolen moments to find yourself lost in a good book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.